A surprise discovery has been made as more people get vaccinated against COVID-19. Not only have they protected themselves against getting infected with the virus, but those who previously suffered persistent side effects of the disease have shown that the jabs offered them some relief. Well, to shed light on this added benefit of getting inoculated, we're joined by Professor Helen Rees, a member of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19. Prof Rees, it's lovely to chat to you. Uh, some respite from those long-haul uh, symptoms, such as tightness of chest, uh, difficulty breathing, and in my case, those revolting headaches. Well, it's, it's a very interesting observation, and it's not one that uh, we would necessarily have expected. Um, the vaccines that we have at the moment are vaccines for prevention of disease. They're not vaccines that uh, we've introduced for therapeutic reasons, you know, for, as you said, to, to, to perhaps contribute to the long haul. So I think a lot more research will have to be done into this. But about 10 to 15 percent of people are reporting these long haul symptoms and the long haul symptoms do include, you know, persistent chest problems, shortness of breath, feeling very, very tired, headaches, a whole range of things, brain fog. People say they just feel can't concentrate easily. Um, but it's a real phenomena and there's a lot of work now being done uh, to try and understand it better. But as far as the vaccine and having some sort of impact, um, it's something that we would, we would need a lot more research to really understand. It's such early days, isn't it? Prof Rees, I just had a look at the Yale study and the Yale study was saying that uh, 10 to 15 percent of long haulers felt worse and about 30 to 40 percent felt a little bit better. Uh, are there more studies or more, uh, you know, sort of uh, peer reviews that have been uh, done on this? Yes, there are quite a lot of, there's a lot of work now being done on long haul COVID. Um, and um, there's a, there are a number of studies that have been done on looking at the use of vaccines for people who have had an infection. As you know, at the moment, we don't recommend that if you have active COVID disease that you, you get vaccinated at the time. Uh, we're suggesting in South Africa that you wait about 30 days. And the reason for that is that your, your body's already really primed up. The immune system's really stimulated by the original infection. If we give a vaccine, we're going to stimulate the, the um, immune system again, and you might get more uh, side effects. So we say wait 30 days and then have the vaccine. Um, but, uh, but there's certainly a lot of work that's been done on looking at the, the combination of vaccines in people who've had infection, um, and also, as I say, on the on long haul, really trying to understand what is causing these persistent symptoms. Could it be that those that the long haulers that are being helped by the vaccine, um, that the vaccine is helping the immune system to fight off the residual virus? Well, I mean, that's what the vaccine does. I mean, it stimulates, uh, uh, it stimulates the immune system. So people with long haul COVID don't still have the virus. Um, there are a few people uh, that will have persistent virus, but a lot of those people who, who we found have got persistent viruses have other conditions such as that their immune system is suppressed. So long haul COVID isn't associated with people who've, who are still infectious. What they have are persistent problems following infection. There have been some studies that have done, have looked, for example, um, at the heart. Um, people have had um, special scans of the heart to see if there's inflammation of the heart. And in those cases, they have found that quite a number of people do seem to have low-grade inflammation of the heart muscle. We know that this is a side effect of, of COVID infection. Inflammation of the heart muscle does occur, um, and that's certainly seen. We also know that some people will have residual damage to the lungs that will take some time to clear. They've also noted inflammation in the kidneys and in long haul. Um, and some of this inflammation will settle. For a lot of people, this will settle down. So anyone who's listening, who's saying, hey, I'm three weeks after, four weeks after, and I'm still feeling not right, you know, don't, don't suddenly think that you're going to have this forever. Much of this will, will resolve. Um, but there is a lot more research going into this now, particularly in Northern Hemisphere countries, in countries such as um, the UK, where they're really taking this very seriously. And they've even set up specialized clinics uh, to look after people who have these long-haul symptoms. 
Inflammation seems to be one of the big issues in long haulers. Uh, is there any way to reduce inflammation and to try and get rid of some of these symptoms that just don't seem to want to go away? It, that, that's, that's difficult because the kind of inflammation that we're talking about that's been picked up in some of these studies, for example, I mentioned the heart muscle. Um, if you took an anti-inflammatory, it wouldn't have an impact on that. That is something that will probably nearly always settle down with time. Um, and so anti-inflammatories per se might relieve some of your symptoms if you've got aches and pains, but it's not necessarily going to resolve the kind of inflammation that people are describing with, uh, in, in, in some of the organs that have been studied. Um, we're still, if, if I'm honest with you, I think that one of the things we're really battling with is, is what is the best way to uh, treat people who are ambulant and at home um, in, it, with, with COVID, we recommend paracetamol. Um, I, I know that some people take vitamins, you know, as, as long as you take them in, in, uh, in a sort of normal uh, amounts that are allowed, it certainly won't do you any harm. But there's very um, other people are, are, as we know, taking drugs like ivermectin. And again, very little evidence that these things do any good. So in terms of people who are sitting at home, thank goodness, not sick enough to require hospitalization, we don't have many options other than, you know, the, the normal things that we say, fluids, you know, keep well hydrated, paracetamol can work. Um, and just, you know, keep, you make sure that you're checked on because sometimes you won't recognize it, but your oxygen levels can fall. Um, and you won't necessarily feel terribly short of breath. So make sure that you are checked up on if you are sitting at home and you're not feeling well, and particularly if you have chest symptoms. Um, but in terms of the inflammation that I've just described that people have recognized with long haul, we don't really know at the moment what is the best treatment, and that's why there are so many studies being undertaken. That's Professor Helen Rees of the Ministerial Advisory Committee on COVID-19. Thank you, as always, for your expertise and time.